Hello Internet, this is my telescope. It is an 8-inch Dobsonia. I got it on eBay from a liquidator, and I think it was either a damage in transit or a return. So it had two things that needed to be fixed. One, it was bent in down here and pretty badly scratched. So I was able to fix that, push out the dent, and touch up the paint. And the other is it was missing a base. So I need to make a base for it. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So if you're interested in telescopes or Dubsonian mounts, uh, stay tuned. We'll get started. So here's what I'm thinking. There will be three basic parts, and I'll make those out of three-quarter inch plywood. Two sides, 26 and a half inches tall by 12 and three-quarter inches wide, with a two and a half inch notch cut out of the top that will fit the mounts on the telescope. A front. 18 and a half inches tall by 11 and a quarter inches wide with a 10 inch circle cut out of the top to clear the telescope body. And two base circles, 20 inches in diameter with a half inch hole drilled through the center which will support a bearing. So let's get outside and we'll get this thing built. Normally I'd make this out of a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood but you may have noticed in another video that my pickup is torn apart for some frame rust repair. So instead I had to buy 2 by 4 sheets that have fit in my Isuzu Rodeo. So I'm using my circular saw with a guide to cut all of the parts to shape. So these are the two legs, two ends, and then this one, this one is the front, and it's going to go here, but I need to cut a notch in it for the telescope so when it pivots, The, where the telescope mount goes. Now I need to round these all off. This is my tension knob to control how much friction is present in those bearings. So here's where we're at. I got all the parts cut out. Uh, everything's been sanded. I glued together the main support piece. And now I'm working on the two uh, hinge support pieces. So this one is the bottom one. I squared out the inside of a washer so it will hold a carriage bolt. And then I added a little screw that's just to keep the carriage bolt from turning. And that screw will support a tension knob that then I use to keep these, you know, give me the right amount of tension. So that one is good. That's the very bottom one. And then the one that the actual column sits on, I went ahead and laid out where that uh, square or <laughs> central support needs to sit. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to glue it on here and then I'm going to back screw it from behind. Maybe. 
I might actually glue it and then screw it from the from above through the glue box, but we'll see. So you're gonna see me now. I'm gonna put that on here. I'm gonna get this cleaned up, get that glued, and then that'll just leave putting the feet on here, um, adding you know, all the hardware, and then we'll have to give it a put of paint. Three of these, put one in each spot. I need to figure out how far from the edge to put them. And I don't know, probably doesn't matter. Let's pick a number. How about inch and a quarter? Now I gotta go get a drill bit, I'll drill the holes, and then I'll press these in probably with a clamp. So when I put the bearing together, I'm gonna need some spacers to help keep everything concentric. So I've drawn some up in SolidWorks and we're gonna 3D print those. So to support this, I'm using what is effectively a large thrust bearing. This one is designed as a low profile Lazy Susan bearing and I chose this one because it's used by a lot of telescope manufacturers in OEM bases. I'm using this and then I bought a set of 15 inch diameter round plates on eBay. I cut a one inch hole in the center and the bearing then sits on these plates and the plate acts as the bearing race and then to keep these concentric I 3D printed a pair of bushings and these bushings fit into the opening or it fit into the hole in the race and then they've got a lift that the bearing itself rides on so that way as the bearing is rolled it's maintained concentric to hold this all together I made a tensioning bolt and I made it out of a carriage bolt so I'm using a carriage bolt that will fit up through the base plate, through the bearing, through the top plate, and then a pair of washers with a rubber washer in between. And this will act as a clutch. And so you've got the carriage bolt, you've got this little clutch, and then on top of that, a spring. The spring will provide consistent clamping force. And then I 3D printed this little cap. It's basically like a pipe cap with a hole in it. So that fits over the spring and as you tighten it down it keeps you know it protects the spring from things getting in there but as you continue to tighten down it will compress on this clutch before the spring fully compresses and it will lock this thing solid and then finally a support washer and this nice aluminum knob so what I want to do is I want to assemble this and show you guys how it goes together so you already saw that I drilled and installed the feet. And on the very base, I've got this washer that I squared out. And it's secured to the base plate with a screw. The bottom end of the carriage bolt fits into that, and it prevents the carriage bolt from spinning. The carriage bolt goes in, and then the first thing is our bearing. So this is that lower bushing that I 3D printed. So then we take a steel plate and that fits over that bushing and that bushing holds it centered. And then we take our bearing and because this has a little lip in it, when I put the bearing on, the bearing is now centered. And then I do the same thing with my top plate, put it in place. And then I use that other bushing and that holds everything concentric. So then after that, I put on my washer, rubber washer and washer, and this acts as the clutch assembly. Then I install the spring, 
and then the stop that I 3D printed. Follow that with a washer and the knob. So with that knob on, but not really tightened down, you can see how this spins. As I tighten it down, that spring compresses on that clutch, and it gets tighter. So you can see now it doesn't roll as well. And then if I really crank down on it, that stop hits, and it locks it solid. I mean, you can still move it if you grab a hold of it and really try. But that is a good way to keep it from rotating once you've got it there. I think that looks pretty good. So how does it work, you might ask? Well, it works really, really well.